There we go. We started. Okay, so last week, last week we talked about um, the tone of a story or the mood of the story. We're going to kind of continue with that this week when we get into uh, Road to Freedom here in the next couple of minutes. So, um, again, do you guys remember what tone is? Do you remember what we talked about last week when it came to tone? My fourth graders, the only ones that were listening. Come on, guys. Tone. Nolan, what do you what do you remember about tone? Okay, Nolan was the only one that should have been talking. Everybody else should have been listening. You probably if you were talking, you didn't hear what he said. Nolan, can you repeat it again? feel how the story wants you to feel so he's right on track the tone of a story is the author's it, it more or less is the author's attitude of the subject okay and the author can create this tone by choosing specific words specific phrases to describe what the character sees, what the character feels, like Nolan was just talking about. They can also express tone through like images they choose for a story. And so today we're gonna kind of focus a little bit on tone, well this whole week we're focusing on tone, but we're also gonna be looking at some of the images that authors choose for their, um, for their illustrations and their stories. So, Right now, you're looking at this little blurb right here, and I can't make it big because I am recording this for my for some other students. But what I want you to do is we're going to read through this little blurb. You should be on the one that has the flower, and then it says chapter or paragraph 9 on it. And if you don't know, it should be page 143. So, again, the staple is over here on this side. It's stapled backwards. Sorry. We'll... we'll, we'll recover from it so i'll read it you follow along and then we're going to talk about um, why the author choose the pictures and the illustrations that he did okay so we're going to go ahead and read through this little blurb right here follow along with me okay everybody there everybody good yeah. okay when again i'm not really sure how this name gets pronounced we're just going to go with gian when gian shone his flashlight in the box he was astonished by what he saw there was an old photo album the first photo was of a garden filled with beautiful yellow and orange day lilies they looked just like the flowers that gian and lynn saw growing wild in china gian smiled he didn't realize that daylilies would grow here. The next photo was of a little girl smelling one of the flowers in the garden. Gian thought about how happy she looked in the photo. As he and Lynn looked at the rest of the photos, Gian realized that another family had once lived in this old farmhouse and they made memories here. Maybe his family could do the same. Okay, Liv, were you following along there? So look at the image right here, this lily. I mean, it's just an illustration. Someone drew it and we printed it on the paper. Why did the author, whoever the author is of this passage, why did they choose this image to go with this illustration? Why did the author choose this image to go with this paragraph? What do you think? Addison? I think she's right on track right there. I think it, I mean, I, you look at the paragraph, you see that the author names the daylilies, but they only describe them in terms of their color and how pretty they were. So, I mean, he doesn't describe them any other way. So Addison says, well, I think the author wants the reader to know what exactly a daylily looks like. And I, I agree. Something very simple. I didn't know what a daylily looked like. Did you? I didn't even know that was a flower because I'm not a green thumb. 
So again, not every reader has seen a daylily, including myself. So this image helps the reader better understand the meaning and tone of the story because they put an illustration here that gives you an idea of what a daylily looks like. With me so far? Okay, all right. Let's go to the next one. I think it is on the back of this one. Let's look at this one. So again, the visuals that are used with a story have an impact on the reader's experience, okay? So authors make sure that the visuals they choose reflect the tone or the author's attitude towards the subject they're trying to, like they're, they're trying to convey. So they have to pick, they, they strategically pick illustrations and pictures that go with their paragraphs, okay? So let's read this one out loud. This one is one page 144 if you're not there. It has a little picture of a tornado there. Um, let's read this one out loud and let's see, let's see what this one looks like. On a warm spring day, Gian, oh, we're still with Gian and Lynn. Gian and Lynn were feeling restless. They were outside playing catch when storm clouds started rolling in. The clouds were dark and menacing. Their mother told them that these storms were common in Illinois and they should go inside and turn on the weather radio whenever they suspected a storm was coming. Gian listened to the weather forecaster say that there was a tornado warning for the area. The forecaster said that people should take cover in the lowest area of the house. Gian knew that he and Lynn had to go into the cellar to be safe. So think about the tone that the author's trying to convey here, or the author's trying to show us. Describe to us. Take your pencil and underline the words and phrases that help you understand this tone. You can work at your table if you want to. You don't have to work by yourself. But look and see if you can find some words or phrases, strong words, strong phrases that help you set the tone for this particular paragraph. Look and see if you can highlight them, underline them, circle them, whichever you do. Look for specific descriptions. I mean, you're looking at this picture. Think about what's what is what words and phrases are describing this picture. So what words and phrases come across to you? Strong words, strong phrases that come across to give you the sense of what type of tone this paragraph is, is trying to convey or trying to show. Riley? Dark and menacing, okay. I would agree with that one. What's another one? Another word, phrase that kind of gives you an idea of what the tone is, kind of reflects this picture. Asher? Tornado warning? Uh, where's the tornado warning at? I see it. Right there? Okay. Tornado warning? Addison? What? Maybe just the storm word or storm clouds. I mean, I know that's above, but storm, storm clouds, that kind of gives you a sense of a tone there. Bo, do you have another one? Okay, Jace? Take cover, okay. Anything else? Nolan? Okay, so I won't, I wouldn't highlight the whole sentence. I would highlight probably seller. 
Seller kind of gives you an idea of the seriousness of it. Again, the forecaster said that people should take cover in the lowest area. I think that kind of helps a little bit too with showing the seriousness of this particular paragraph or blurb, whatever you would like to call it. So my next question, this is kind of important. My next question is based off of the words and phrases that we have kind of identified and the illustration, the picture, what is the tone of these paragraphs? What's the tone? What's the author trying to what's the author trying to convey with the tone? Remember we talked about last week the tone could be tone could be comical, tone could be excitement, tone could be sad. What would be the tone of this these two paragraphs here? What do you think? I sh I would hope I'd have more hands than I have right now at this particular moment. What's the tone? George, your hand went up. What do you think? The tone. Scared. Okay. So you're saying scared? What are some other words that come across as the tone of this paragraph? Yeah. Serious? That was the one I was kind of thinking of. Viv? What? Um, can you put it in one word, like? Danger, maybe? Another one? Do we have another word that we could use? Addison? Huh? Nervous? Maybe a feeling of, like, dread because of the storm? You know, you're thinking a severe storm's coming. John has no choice, but he has to go down to the cellar. So again, these are all really good words that you guys came up with for the tone of these, this paragraph. So this obviously isn't going to be a comical tone. This obviously isn't going to be, um, you know, a happiness or excitement. It's not going to be mysterious or creepy, but it's definitely more of a serious danger, dread type of feeling. Okay. All right, we're going to stop there.